Well, good evening, everybody. It's uh, Greg Miller and Jim Lance here with you this evening. And it's good to be back once again. And, and uh, you know, we uh, enjoy Bible study. And I think it's probably one of the most important parts of uh, the walk of, of a Christian is to study God's Word and, and to get together and, and just uh, just to enjoy it. Now, it's it's uh, of course it's always better when we're here together and we can ask questions and and join in. But uh, but you know we're doing doing the best we can, doing what uh, God wants us to do. Amen. And I believe as long as we do that, then then we're going to be fine. We're uh, but we're hoping to get started back up soon. It's going to be uh, it's going to be a process, uh, and uh, we're we've got to work through this and try to get a plan together so because hopefully we'll be uh, opening the church up for too long so we got to get a plan and get things together to try to do it to where we can protect everybody as best we can and, and uh, follow the laws and regulations that sort of thing but uh, but we're going to do the best we can but you know we still have God in our hearts and, and Amen. God's with us walks with us every day and no matter where we are and we don't have to be in church uh, though we want to be, but we uh, but we still got to serve God and, and worship Him uh, anywhere we can. And uh, I just ask you to be patient, uh, and uh, it's going to get it's going to get better. It's, things are going to going to get better, and, and I see the light at the end of the tunnel, and uh, things are things are going to move along here for too long. So just hang in there. That's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> and we will we will be blessed for yeah. doing this. At, well, that's right. God will yeah. bless us. It's uh, well, it's a good ministry. I really enjoy doing it, and and, uh, and uh, I'm really glad everybody you know that that uh, listens in, and and uh, you know God has a, a blessing absolutely for each and every one of us, and uh, any time we we do anything for Him, uh, it's absolutely a blessing. So I thank Him for that. Amen. For that today, so. Uh, today we're going to be uh, starting in chapter 9 of John. We just finished up with chapter 8. We're going to continue on uh, talking about Christ being the light of the world. Uh, and again, he's being, uh, he's, he's present with the Pharisees and, uh, and, and all these enemies that he has that are, that are against him and doing everything to discredit him are still present here in this ninth verse. Things are still going on. Uh, Christ is still teaching, still doing his miracles. But we're going to take a little turn here, and we're going to see how, how God, uh, how Jesus' ministry uh, is is uh, for, just further etched in, in the stone here. I mean, you, you see how uh, the things that Jesus does, and you see his uh, the people that, that are against him and, and, and all those things, but you see how Jesus comes through with the truth. And the truth always uh, always wins and always comes out above everything else. And uh, so we just uh, we're, we want to get into this. We're really excited about this evening. So I'm gonna open up in a, in a word of prayer. Our kind, and gracious heavenly Father, we thank you again, Lord, for this opportunity to, to study your word and to fellowship together, God. Yes, and Lord. I pray that you would take your word to see and you would apply it to our hearts, Lord, that you would give us spiritual understanding, God, that your Spirit would show us what you need us to know in our walk with you, God. And I yes, pray that Lord. you would anoint the word and, and, and the speakers today. I pray that you would anoint each one, each household represented here this evening, God, that are watching. We thank you. We praise you, Lord. We glorify you. Uh, and these things we ask in your holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. Now, Jim's going to read for us uh, this evening. I want to have uh, Jim's going to read, uh, and you can follow along with us, uh, the first seven verses. And Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from birth. And the disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, the, this man or his parents, and that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither has this man sinned, nor his parents, about that which was the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me 
while it was while it is day and night cometh which no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When, the, when he had said this, thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made a, a clay up and of his spittle and then anointed the eyes of the blind man and with, with the clay and said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Salaam, which is interpreted sent. He went and hid his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. Amen. Thank you, Jim. I also want to mention, too, uh, if any of y'all, I, I didn't get any prayer requests uh, for this evening. If anyone has any prayer requests or anything uh, that you want to make mention, <coughs> just <coughs> excuse me, leave us a message and uh, uh, we'll, uh, we'll get these prayer requests in. Now, as, as Jim has read there, we're, we're, looking at, we're looking at a couple different things. We're looking at light and we're looking at blindness. We're talking about two different things here, but they're all, both these things are working together in that Jesus is the light of the world, as he said back uh, in, uh, even since the, uh, the beginning of John and clear through, uh, he's still uh, talking about himself as being the light. And then, and then on the other side of the coin, we have blindness. And then we know that blindness is, is the very thing that, that keeps us from seeing the light and it kept these Pharisees and these others from Amen. seeing the light and, and knowing the truth because we know that the light will, will, will bring out uh, bring out sin and bring out uh, iniquity and bring out lies and bring out all these things and with the truth. And so we're, we're, we've got a great example here with, with this man. And uh, as we, we start out here in the, in the ninth chapter, uh, we're talking about Jesus had passed by a man and said that he was blind from his birth. And so we know that if you look at... Uh, at uh, this person here. Now we've known that Jesus has healed the blind before. Uh, the blind that he healed before a lot of times were, they hadn't been blind at birth. They had been blind later in their life or something happened. This man was blind from birth. So this impresses the miracle uh, all the more because of this. And uh, but listen to what happens because we're going to see again how his, his beloved disciples, now these are men that he chose, these are men that loved him and followed him uh, they, they, every day. But we're still uh, seeing the, the minds of these men and how they think in the natural instead of the spiritual as they have through this whole book of John that we've studied so far. Every time we see a miracle or something happen, uh, the disciples, the first thing they do is, is they question things uh, they look at things in the natural, but they don't think about uh, the spiritual things that, that Christ is trying to teach him. And so the first thing they said, they said, and his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? See, the, they didn't focus on the man being healed. They never, I don't think it crossed their minds. They, they seen this blind man uh, he, that uh, says Jesus had passed by uh, and Obviously, we know the disciples would have been there with him. And so when they saw him, the first thing they wanted to do was, who's the blame? Who is the blame or what is the reason why this man is blind? And I know they've seen blind people before. Why did they ask Jesus at this time this certain question? And, it, and I always wondered about that because I know that, you know, as they traveled from uh, the cities and, and, and along the Sea of Galilee and the different places they were, I'm sure, I know they encountered many people that were, were lame and, and blind and sick and different things because we know Jesus healed many people. But why at this time did they ask this? And I know this has always been a question with a lot of people. Whenever something bad happens to a person, uh, whether it's sickness or, or maybe it's an accident, or whatever it might be, but there are some people that question and, and ask, you know, was it, was it because of sin that this happened or was it because... Uh, his parents' sin, and we know back in Exodus it does talk about uh, the sin of, of a person carrying on for two, three, four, 
generations in, in certain instances. And, you know, could have been the case here. But I want you to see what Jesus does here. You know, he's not going to argue with them. First of all, Jesus knows. <laughs> he knows <laughs> if there was any sin or anything here. He's going to know it. But, you know, that's, you know, sin is, is, is important that a person's forgiven uh, from sin, absolutely. But the point here that Jesus wants to make is not that why or what's the reason why he was blind, you know, who do we blame, that sort of thing. He wants us to know today how God can be glorified from this. Amen. And this is what he tells his disciples. He says, and this is Jesus' answer, he said, Neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents, but the, that the works of God should be made manifest in him. He's saying, look, it doesn't matter uh, if the sins of this man or the sins of his parents. What matters here is the work that Jesus is going to do. What matters here is the is that God is going to be glorified Amen. Uh, through this yep. and through this this cure and and uh, you know the disciples as well as everyone else that were around there need, they need to know this and we need to know it this evening because you know we know that uh, Jesus does a lot of miracles and work in our lives and uh, but God gets the glory and uh, we you know even ourselves we still go through things in our life I've mentioned many times about. Uh, trials and troubles and sickness and different things that you know as Christians go through. Just because we're believers in Christ doesn't mean that we're going to be immune to the troubles and the trials of the world. We know no. that we live in a fallen world, and we know that that God allows certain things, uh, you know, that that uh, that help us to grow and strengthen us and, and forge us into uh, the the person that He's He's uh, building us up to be. And so it takes these things sometimes, and so. We look at this here, even as, as ourselves, whenever we see these things, we need to remember that, that uh, a lot of these things are done to, for, to, to glorify God. We're going to see that here in a little bit with the testimony of this man. Uh, but it goes on here to say, I must work the works of him that sent me. He's talking about his father. While it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. Okay, so we're going to look here uh, when he talks about day and he talks about night. And we want, I want to look at something here that goes along with this, and I want to uh, I want to talk about light and darkness. And we know the Bible uh, in, in the New Testament, you know, even Jesus talks a lot about light and darkness. Paul talks about it, and a lot of the, the other disciples talk about it. And uh, but it, but it's very important. And 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 what this means is, you know, while Jesus' ministry was was on this earth at this time, when he was walking, talking, teaching. Uh, his ministry, he was present with his people. In other words, the light of the world, being Jesus Christ, was present with these people at this time. This is this is where he was. They were they were in the presence of the light of the world. Amen. But when Jesus would leave, uh, but between the time that that Jesus was resurrected and the Holy Spirit was given to the disciples, there was a, a short period of time there that that Jesus was not in the world. He, mm -hmm. he had already ascended to the Father. And, that, and so when Jesus said what, that he has to work while it is light, in other words, he has this work to do while his ministry is here on earth. Amen. Afterwards, the work obviously is left, left to us and as it started out with the disciples in the first century church. And it, it goes through to us. And so Jesus is saying that uh, he has work to do that his Father had sent him. Amen. And he says this all the time. And Jesus never takes any credit of himself or anything, but he always gives his father the, the credit and the glory. And he said, but he has to do this while he's day. In other words, he has work to do in his ministry while he's here. This is very important. In these last few months here that we're looking at of his ministry, he does more work in these last few months than he does in, in the beginning. His ministry is getting close to, to coming to an end here as, as, as on earth. And so he has a work to do, a lot of work to do. Amen. And and he's going to do it while he's he's there present with this time. There's many things that he has to show him. But he says, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And that's what we're talking about. Yep. When he was in the world, he's still the light of the world today because he's still here. Amen. His Holy Spirit is, is absolutely still present with us. But when he walked and talked with these people, he was the light of the world walking on the, the soil in, in, in this area here in Jerusalem, and he was among the people. And and so when we, we look at this, 
uh, we want to uh, let's go on here to verse six. And he said, <clears throat> and when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground. Now he, he's he's going to heal the the blind man. So he spat on the ground, made uh, clay of the spittle, and anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, Go wash in the pool of slum, which is interpreted sent. He went his way, uh, therefore, and washed, and came seeing. Now this is, <laughs> I want to tell you to tell you this evening. This is exactly how salvation works Amen. you know we can see the plan of salvation all over in god's word and we see it right here this evening and, and how this works you know jesus was he had the opportunity he had the opportunity right now to heal this by a man he could have just healed him and went on nothing more would have been said or done possibly but he wanted to do this in a way that would glorify god we know that when jesus done everything on earth when, when he walked and talked with these people, it was always a teaching moment. <clears throat> he always done things to teach and to, to, to show his disciples and the others there uh, 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 how God works in, in, uh, in the lives of, of the ones that he loved. And Amen. this is what he was teaching here. So so he's, he's telling us this, and I like how John lays this out, and he, and, uh, because it, it shows us how salvation works. And so we have this blind man. If we look at blind men, I think I, I know this for a fact. We were all blind at one time. Amen. No, we weren't physically blind, possibly, but we were we were spiritually blind. Whenever we're spiritually blind, Amen. Um, we don't understand the things of God. Uh, we're blind to to the things that that uh, even what Jesus would say. I know people would say. Uh, that they've read the Bible and they don't understand any of it. And, and uh, if, uh, if you're not saved, it's, it's hard. Uh, the only thing you'll understand is what the Holy Spirit gives you and it leads you to salvation, obviously. Amen. But these people here were blind, and they were spiritually blind. And, and the disciples also, or at this at points in this, were, were, were blind also. Even though they were followers of Christ, they were still blind to, to the things that he, he was doing and, he, and that he's even doing here. And so, but let's look at this a minute. So we have the blind man. The blind man, we know that uh, as, if we look at ourselves and put ourselves in this place, we have a man that's been blind since birth. And, and, and we know that, that the unbelievers, the ones that are lost, obviously, are, uh, are the same way. But look what Jesus does. He, he touches this man. He, he makes a bit of clay. He, he puts it on the eyes of the blind man. Now, he wasn't immediately healed. You say, why not? Why? Couldn't have Jesus just touched his eyes automatically? He could have seen. Absolutely. He could have done this. But listen, this is a teaching moment, and this is how he teaches us about salvation. And so he touches the man. He puts his, his, his fingers on his eyes and, and puts the clay on his eyes, anoints his eyes. Amen. But listen to what happens next. And he said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam. Now, now look here. Now, now, I'm sure this man didn't question anything. It doesn't say anything about it. He was just, he was just happy that he was going to receive the sight. But he didn't receive it immediately. Now, if we look at this, we can say, uh, why didn't this happen? Jesus gives him something to do. He gives him a command. He says, go and wash. Now, he's, look. If this man hadn't have been obedient to what Christ told him to do, uh, you remember old Naaman, you know, he told him to go wash, and he, you know, he said, that's the silliest thing I ever heard. Uh, but he did. But this man here, he didn't question it, but he went. But look, he was obedient to the Lord. He was obedient to what Jesus told him to do. Now, he, he believed, and so he went. He believed, and so he went. You know, if he hadn't believed, he, he, he would have sat there and he would have remained blind the rest of his life. I, I absolutely know that. Uh, because I know that if we we are disobedient uh, to God, and, and that, uh, you know, we're, we're not going to receive a blessing for that. Uh, but he was obedient. And he says he went his way, therefore, and he washed, and he came saying, he, after he went and he was obedient, and he went to the pool and he, he washed his eyes, then immediately, uh, he could see, immediately, he went from blindness to light. He went from being blind to, to seeing immediately. What yeah. a wonderful thing this would have been. Uh, uh -huh. You know, yeah. I, I've never experienced blindness, and, and 
and myself and and uh, I'll, you know I'm, I know, uh, I, you know, it's it's something I don't I don't understand because I've never been through it. But I can I can see that that this person here uh, would have been given a gift of a lifetime here by giving the gift of his sight. And so it's just like whenever we're saved, you know, we, we're blind and and uh, you know, the Holy Spirit draws us, and we if we accept Christ as our Savior, if we believe in Him. We, we automatically, we can see. Now, we can see before physically, but I'm talking about a spiritual sight. Mm -hmm. If you've never been saved, and if you if you don't you don't know what I'm talking about, it, it's, it's different. It's different. <laughs> it's being able to see things uh, through the eyes of Christ, and, and that is something absolutely wonderful. Just like this man here can physically see, to spiritually see is, is absolutely amazing. And it's something that when it happens to you in your life, uh, you're going to be like this man here. And you're gonna, and you're gonna, uh, we're gonna listen to his testimony, and you could have that same testimony, absolutely. But it's it's wonderful how how Jesus does and, and what he does for for this man, and and so we're gonna go on here, and uh, let's see, we're gonna go here and, and continue this, and uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and. Uh, it's like the song, I was blind, no, but now, now I see. Yeah, yeah, that's right, again. That's right, Jim. I think I even wrote that down somewhere. Because that's, <laughs> that's very important. It's very important. And uh, so, Jim, would you go ahead and read 8 through uh, 14? 8 through 14, 4. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before him had seen him, that he was blind, said, I am not this, is this not he that was blind, that was bagged, was bagged, some, I can't always say, some said that he, others said he is like him, but he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, how were thine eyes opened? And he answered and said, a man that was called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And he went and washed, and I received my sight. Then said they unto him, Where is he? And he said, I know not. They brought they brought the to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind. And it was in the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Thank you, Jim. We're going to talk about his neighbors here. <laughs> and uh, this is, and I want to say this, this is evidence of change. Evidence of change. And I want to tell you this evening, whenever you receive Christ, there's evidence of change. Oh, yeah. And you may not really realize it, but people are going to see a difference. They're going to see a change. Amen. I'm going to Amen. look at this why I'm saying this because it says here, the neighbors therefore uh, they which were before had seen him, uh, that he was blind, is not this he that sat and begged? <clears throat> so he was in the area, obviously, here of his neighbors, or his neighbors would have been around or, and, and so on, but Jesus is talking about his, his neighbors here, uh, or John's writing about his neighbors and, and uh Immediately they see this man. Now he's he's drawing attention. I'm telling you, the people of he's got the attention of these people because this is a, a wonderful, miraculous thing to, to for this man to receive his sight. And so this his neighbors saw a change. They saw a change in him. What was that change? He could see. Amen. Now obviously they would have noticed this change. And. Uh, but some some of them doubted, and they they had seen and said, "Is not this man that sat in back?" They, they said, "Is this the same guy?" And some said, "This is he." But others said, "Well, he is like him." Uh, but he said, "The man said, I am he." Look, some said, "Well, that's not him. This looks like the guy, but <laughs> obviously <laughs> it's not him because this guy can see." Well, it was him. And and so they didn't recognize him because of the change. Now I don't know how many of you, uh, if you can remember, whenever you were saved, uh, 
Were you recognized by your neighbors? <laughs> uh, I can think of some people that, that uh, you know, that had received Christ and, and a change that happened in their life was just night and day. And, and they were almost not recognizable, uh, especially by their language, uh, by the things that they did, the places they went. Uh, that sort of thing, you know, the, the, the Jesus takes a lot of those things, uh, those, those things away from you uh, that, that lead us astray. And, and so we, we live differently. We act differently. We live differently. Amen. And so sometimes we're, we're not recognized, just as this man here. And so, you know, because they were, they were also blind as these people were. And they could, they could see a difference. They could see something that was different about this man, obviously. He was by him, and now he can see. But they didn't really see why, or they didn't really see what was really going on here. Uh, and, and, and so we're going to look here at the, one of the important, important things that, that uh, said. I want you to listen to, to this testimony this man has. Uh, he says... Uh, <clears throat> and verse 10 says, Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes open? They asked him this question, and listen to what he says. He said, He answered and said, A man that is called Jesus, he made clay, he anointed thine eyes, and he said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam, and I washed, and washed, and I went, and washed, and I received sight. Mm -hmm. This is his testimony, and it's very simple. He said, He didn't go into a big story, and he didn't go into something that, uh, that was was way off at base, but he he said this is the facts. This is I'm telling you, these are the facts, and this is what happened, and this is what happened to me. He said, a man that's called Jesus, he made clay and anointed my eyes, and he said to me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash, and I went and washed, and I received sight. He's saying that Jesus, he he met this man Jesus, this man Jesus touched him, touched his eyes. And, and I was obedient and did what he said, and I went and washed in the pool, and now I can see. That's the whole story. That's, that's all it is. And we're going to see how it goes through the rest of this, uh, that uh, he has to make this testimony several times, uh, because it was hard for people to believe this, this could happen. It was, it was just really hard for them to accept uh, this miracle. And it was because of their blindness is the reason why. But, uh, so then they said here in verse 12, it said, Then said they unto him, Where is he? He said, I know not. And they brought him to the Pharisees that afford, they knew him. It, it says, let me back up. They brought to the Pharisees him that was aforetime was blind. And it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made clay and opened his eyes. So they brought him to the Pharisees. Now we know that... A lot of times, when when people were healed, they had to go to the had to go to the temple. Uh, we know when the lepers were healed, they they had to go and had there were certain things that, uh, that had to be done and according to according to their law and and uh, in in the purification and all that. So they but they took him to the Pharisee. Now I don't think they took him there for for any kind of a ritual activity. I think they took him there to, as a, as a spectacle as something that uh, that uh, they wanted to see how they would react. Because we know uh, here in just the last few chapters that we've read, while Jesus was around these Pharisees, these, these people knew what were going on. They knew that these Pharisees uh, were doing everything they could to discredit Christ, and they were doing everything they could to, to place blame on him in one way or another. And so... Uh, whenever they, they see this and, and they listen to this man's testimony, their their blindness and their hard-heartedness uh, caused them to not believe anything that was, was done. The only thing they would, was concerned about uh, was questioning uh, Jesus and, and his motives and why these things were done. They didn't, they didn't see the miracle. You know, they... Here's the thing. They... They had the way and the truth and the life standing right there in front of them. Amen. And they didn't even know, didn't even recognize him. I don't know how you could stand in the presence of Christ and not realize who he is, Jim. I, I, can't, I can't understand how they didn't know. I mean, there had to be something about this man yeah. 
that would have been I can't I can't imagine how great it would have been to have been there. But he was standing right there in front of them, and they didn't even see it. They didn't even realize it. And this, this is, uh, it's a shame because he, he said he came to his own, and his own received him not. And I'm sure this broke the heart of God uh, and broke the heart of Christ because he came uh, to offer salvation to his own people. Yeah. And uh, and look how they treated him, and they uh, they, they discredited him, they they. Uh, done everything they could and, until they, they, they beat him and they put him to the crawl. And, uh, you know, in his own people, he went to, and, and they, you know, because of their blindness, uh, they didn't see. And, and so when we look at look at how blind these people were and, and what blinded them. So we know that in, in this world, in this world that we live in, and I'm not talking about the spiritual world, but I'm talking about uh, the natural world that we live in, uh, Satan has, has blinded uh, so many people and he continues to blind people today. This is, this is what he does to keep us from seeing the truth. If he can keep us blind, and I'm not talking about physical blindness, but I'm talking about spiritual blindness. Amen. If he can if he can put a veil over our, our eyes and our hearts that we don't see and understand who Christ is, then, then he's got... Uh, control of, of us and everything we do and so Amen. just like these Pharisees now we got to remember uh, these Pharisees were religious men and that's why I have a problem with people saying uh, asking if you're religious uh, I don't like that word <laughs> because it doesn't tell me anything these guys thought they were religious and people knew they were you know they also thought they were religious uh, religion never saved anybody and and no. so you know, these guys were supposed to be the closest you could get to God. They were the, the Pharisees, the, the you know, the priests in the temple. Uh, these were the spiritual leaders of their day. But they were blind to the truth. They were blind to everything. They were self-serving. They were only interested in themselves and what they could get uh, and, and how people would, would treat them and look up to them, put them in a place of, of, uh, of a higher order and this is what they were interested in they weren't interested in serving uh, the people or uh, doing any of these things but they were they were blind because of their hard heartedness and, and, uh, and the sin and everything that was in their life because sin sin blind this is what blinds people to sin you know why because it separates us from God whenever we're separated from God you know in the, in the end times or when the times that whenever a person leaves this earth and, and doesn't know God, uh, the separation that, that happens there is eternal darkness. Mm. And how, how terrible that would be. Now, I'm, I'm talking about if you've ever been in a cave or a coal mine with no light, I'm talking about absolute darkness. <laughs> and so that's a separation because uh, that's the only thing there can be because, uh, you know, that blindness, uh, it, it doesn't let us see the light. Even though the light's shining, we still can't see it. In order for somebody to see the light, they have to receive it. You know, to uh, uh, we have to uh, we have to believe to receive. I, I wrote this down. We have to believe to receive because this is what it takes. We can't receive the light until we believe in Christ and we receive it in our heart. Then and only then yeah. we can see it. And then that's what happened to this blind man. Uh, the light's standing right in front of him, and, and he's blind. He can't see it. Jesus is, is he, you know, he has compassion on this man and, and he heals him, but until his eyes were open, he never saw Jesus. Now, how amazing thing would it be uh, if the first thing you do is you open up your eyes and see Jesus? That'd be wonderful. But, uh, but this is how it is with, with us. You know, the light's right in front of us. I'm telling you about the light right now and of Jesus Christ, and it can be right in front of you, and because of the blindness, you can't see it. And uh, so you, when you, if you can't see it, then uh, you doubt it, you, uh, you don't believe, and, and that sort of thing. And so you stay in your blindness, just like this man here. If he hadn't went and washed, he would have continued uh, to be blind as he had from birth because he, didn't, he wasn't obedient to what uh, Christ told him to do. And just like whenever we're saved, we, you know, we have to believe uh, that Jesus is, is a God's son. We have to believe that that uh, he was born of a virgin, that he died on the cross, he rose the third day, and he lives with the Father. And uh, if we're obedient and we believe in that, then, then we're, we're, our eyes obviously 
are open and we can see spiritually uh, once again. And so I'm going to look here um, a little bit further. Uh, we'll go on here, we won't keep you too awful long, but I want to get down here and look, see, in, in verse 14, uh, it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. We know Jesus healed on the Sabbath day. He did. He did that, didn't he, Jim? He did that a lot of times. He fed his disciples on the Sabbath day. He healed on the Sabbath day. Yeah. You know, the the Sabbath day was made for man, I think the Bible says, and not man for the Sabbath. In other words, just because of the Sabbath day, Jesus still did miracles. He still did did his work. It's because that... that uh, you know, he is doing the work that he needs to do, but the important thing is is how we worship and uh, and, and how we glorify God and all these things. And we do this every day. Amen. We just don't do it on the Sabbath day. We don't just uh, do things that, on the Sabbath that have to be done, but we do, them, uh, we do them every day, or we should do them every day. And so uh, we're going to go on here. Uh, Jim, if you want to read 15... Uh, 15 through 18 for us there. 15 through 18. Then again, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, He put clay upon me, upon my eyes, and washed, and I washed, and I do see. Therefore said then some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath. Others, others said, how can this and a man be a sinner? How can that is a sinner do these miracles? And there was a, a division among them. They say unto the blind man, again, what sayest thou of him that he has opened thine eyes? He said, He is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called his parents to him that, that was received his sight. Thank you, Jim. Okay, so now basically this man's on trial. He's taken to the Pharisees. And he's questioned, and he's he just grilled, and 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 these these they're they're relentless. They won't let up, and so they take him to the Pharisees. Well, the Pharisees ask them how that he had received his sight, and uh, and so he said to them, he put clay upon my eyes, and he washed, and I do see. He still his testimony. He's giving his testimony to these these Pharisees, and he's telling them, look, this is all I know. I'm not making any more out of this than it is, but this is how I know uh, that this man, Jesus, uh, he put the clay on my eyes, told me to wash, and I did. Excuse me, and I can see. That's all I know. That's all there is to it. And so, uh, the, so the Pharisees, they're, they're not accepting this. They, they don't accept this at all because they, first of all, they, they just can't see uh, why Jesus is even here and why he's even doing these miracles. They know these miracles are being done. It says that they, you know, the Bible says they, they couldn't doubt it. I mean, it was right there. And, uh, so they couldn't say anything against it. But they were they were putting that away and doing whatever they can and using whoever they could to, to discredit Christ. And so, so therefore said some of the Pharisees, now listen to this. He, they said, this man is not of God because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Just, you know, look, these people were so set in their, their laws and, their, and, and all their, their things that they, they, were, they were doing that if anyone, you know, strayed away from any of these things immediately, uh, they, were, they were against God. And, and, uh, but they didn't understand who Jesus was. And so they said, because he did this on the Sabbath day, uh, that, that he's a sinner. And uh, so the, here they, they, they try. Okay, here's the thing. I know they're working together and they're trying to think and, and considering, how can we convict this man? What can we use? And they said, okay, here it is. 
Okay, this man, according to our law, he you know he can't do this on the Sabbath day, and he did. So we got this. We have got a charge against him. Now let's see if we can make it stick. And so he's he's being put on trial here, even at this time, along with these people. And so, um, so others said, how can a man that is a sinner? Now they're saying, look, you're calling this guy a sinner because he heals on the Sabbath day. And they're saying, how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a uh, was a division among them. So they're saying, okay, so if you're saying this is this man is a sinner, how can a man that is a sinner give this blind man his sight? It's not possible because they they know that that a, a sinner uh, has nothing to do with God, and and there's no way that a, a sinner uh, can do these miracles. Uh, and, and not you know not being or belonging uh, to God and and uh, so there was a division among them. We mm -hmm. see back even in the last two uh, couple uh, chapters here, even when he when he uh, we look back and how uh, he was before the Pharisees and all. And we know that some believed and, and some didn't, and there was still a division there. There's there's still some people that just couldn't make up their mind. Um, and, and, and you know, this is the way it is today. There's still people that, that uh, can, can see what is right and what is wrong. And even though they're surrounded by people that are absolutely blind to the truth, there are still some people that still see uh, see part of that light. And there were some people here that did because they, they realized that, uh, that there's no way that Jesus could be a sinner and and do this. They they didn't uh, they didn't come right out and say, yes, this this man is the son of God. They didn't they didn't go as far as that. Oh, no. But they did say that there's no way if he could be a sinner, and and do this. And so they they were uh, they were divided. And so the Pharisees are, you know, they see this, and and they're going to continue to do everything they can to do this. And so it says here in seventeen. So they're still, they're talking to the blind man. They say to the blind man again. Now they're asking him, it's like the third time they're saying, uh, what sayest thou of him? And that, that he that opened thine eyes, and he said he's a prophet. They're asking, now, what do you say about this Jesus? What do you, who do you think he is? What do you think he is? You know, uh, and, and this is what the man says. He says, I, I don't know. He's a prophet. You know, he, I don't know that he realized who Christ was, but he knew there was something uh, that this man had the power of God and the power of heaven came down in order for him to receive his sight. Amen. He knew that. So he knew, if nothing else, this man was a prophet. Uh, but uh, they still, they you know, they kept asking him over and over and over again. And uh, I believe they did this because they were trying to get him to twist his words around. And they were trying to get him to uh, to, to slip up and and, and uh, make a mistake in, in his testimony that they could they could use against him and and we know that when a person is is testifying and, and, and they're, they're speaking in the truth there's not going to be any any deviation in their their uh, what they're telling you we, we know that if a person is, is, is not being true and, and if a person is lying then uh, the more you ask them to, to, to go over, the events of things that happen, there's always going to be differences there. And this is one way that they, they would, it's what they were trying to do. They were trying to, to see something that they could discredit this man's testimony, but they couldn't do it because his testimony was what it was, and it was absolute truth. They couldn't say anything against it because it, it was the truth. And so but they try and try to do everything they can and uh, try to twist this, twist this around. Now this goes on for for a while, we're not going to be able to finish this this evening, but uh, we'll we'll continue. Uh, but we're going to look at the, the next the next uh, next week. We're going to look at uh, the, the Pharisees talking to the parents yeah. and trying to gather up all the, all the information they can. Now they're not wanting this. They're not wanting this proof to to glorify God with. <laughs> not at all. They've got other plans, uh, and, it, and it's not to glorify God, but it is to find something against Christ that they can they can convict him of and and, and, and kill him. And this is their this is their intent. Um, because of the darkness of their hearts, this is their intent is to, to kill Jesus. They're not 
they're not paying any attention to anything he does. They're not uh, giving him credit for anything he does. But the only thing they're doing is looking for something that they can convict him on. And how terrible that is. And so because we know that, that uh, we serve a, a, a risen Savior that, that does everything he can to, to, to help us and to, uh, to save us. And this is what he came to earth for. But it's because of our blindness that we can't see this. And this evening I would say that, you know, it's a terrible thing to be blind. And uh, physically and spiritually. And I would say this evening that if you are, then, uh, then you know, I'd ask you this evening that you would receive Christ that you may see. Just like this man here. It doesn't take a lot to believe. Uh, and all, all you have to do is, is just... Uh, just listen to what the Holy Spirit's telling you and, and, and do what the, the Bible tells us to do, what Jesus told us to do. It's that simple. And, uh, but what we have to do is just, uh, just accept Christ and, and do what He tells us to do. And, and, and As we grow in our Christian life and we listen to, to, to God and, and through His Word, He helps us to grow and He helps us to, to continue to be better than we are. You know, we always, I always hope that uh, we're better tomorrow than we were today. Uh, I always hope that we, we, we're closer to God tomorrow than we are today. We, we never stop growing. And uh, from the day that, that we receive Christ till the day we go home to be with Him, we're constantly growing and being closer to Him. And so we have a prayer request here from uh, Lucille McDermott wants a prayer for uh, her friend Jerry. And I know we had this on our prayer list last week and, and thank you Lucille we'll have a uh, prayer for Jerry I know he's he's going through a tough time and we know there's others that are that are uh, suffering from uh, many different things uh, I believe uh, Lloyd Boyce uh, uh, I believe yeah. he's improving some uh, there's still he's going to be in the hospital a few more weeks they're still uh, you know watching after him very very closely but I think there is some improvement there uh, and he's been able to eat a little bit and so on. So uh, we praise the Lord for that. We're going to keep praying for him also and and uh, for all those that, that need our prayers. And, and let's pray for each other. Let's keep each other in prayer and, and uh, keep our church in prayer and our, our uh, state and our nation. Uh, let's, let's keep uh, everyone in prayer. And we pray for protection uh, from God. We pray for healing. And, and all these things because uh, I, I know this for a fact that that our prayers uh, they, they reach the throne and, and and God hears and answers our prayers I know that and believe that this evening and so uh, we need to agree together in prayer and and, and lift up these these people this evening so uh, would you bow your heads we'll have a word of prayer be closed Lord we just thank you for yes, this beautiful Lord. day once again yes, God and Lord we just want to lift up Jerry before you this evening. God, yes, I pray your healing hand, right Father, would be with him this touch evening. God, that you would uh, touch him with your healing hand. Lord, yes, that you would uh, cause touch. healing to come to his body, that you would yes, restore yes, health Lord. back to him this evening. God, Lord, be with the doctors, Lord. nurses, and the staff there that are uh, with him, uh, giving them you that under the him. wisdom and skill, knowledge that they need. Lord, you be with Lord again. We ask to see him that you would be with him, that you would send healing to him also. God, we thank you for the, the victory that we've seen. We thank you for the improvement that we've seen. God, we know that all these things come from you, God. We glorify your name, Lord, and, and this healing. And Lord, as we ask for these this evening, we ask and we, we believe in faith, Lord, that you will do these things. And God, we just thank you ahead of time, God, for the miracles that you are doing in our lives and in, in, in the lives of our church members and the ones that are out there watching this evening. Yes, Lord. Lord, as we wait while you work, God, yes, we Lord. see how you're working in the lives of people. And, yes, and we, we see every day your miracles and the things that you do. God, we just praise you today. We yes, lift Lord. up each one that's out there watching this evening. Yes, I pray Lord. your blessing upon Lord, each one and each household. Yes, God, Lord. we thank you for this time this evening. Yes, God, Lord. I pray that you would, you would bless us. Lord, that you would put your word upon our hearts, Lord, that we would not sin against you this evening, God. Uh, give us a pure heart yes, and, and right spirit, Lord. And these things we ask in your precious and holy name. Yes, Lord. Amen. Can yes. I say one thing? Yes, sir, Jim. Go okay, uh, the, the, the clay that Jesus put on the man's eyes, that was 
it didn't really heal him right then. Yeah. It gave him the faith yeah. to go to the pool of Salaam, which is required yeah. for Absolutely. healing. Absolutely. That's what it's it was. faith is what it's did. It's faith. By faith we are saved. Amen. That's right. That's what the Bible tells Amen. us. It takes that faith, and yeah. it's a saving faith that, that yeah. it takes to to make that step and go. So I just want to thank everybody yep. once again Amen. for for being here this evening, and and uh, I just pray God be with you and bless you this week. Yeah. Good night.